Hi guys, I am so glad that you decided to tune back in to empower your body and empower your mind. Again, I am Joanne Johnson, your host, and get ready and buckle up. We're about to have a fantastic ride this morning. As always, we do meals in 20 minutes or less. Sometimes we bring you a little bit of humor. We may laugh, we may cry, we don't really know what's gonna happen on these shows. I may have a co-host or I may not. It might be just me flying solo. Whatever God wants us to do is what we're gonna do. One thing I can guarantee you though is we're gonna have a fantastic time each and every time. Again, making these meals in 20 minutes or less, we're gonna make you a rock star in your own kitchen. And I know, I know you guys are tired. You come home from work, you've got the kiddos, you know, we've got the jobs, the responsibilities, all kinds of things. And we don't have three days to be in our kitchen. I know I don't, so I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you guys don't either. But I don't wanna go through the drive-through every night for my family. I wanna empower my family's body you know with wonderful food i also want to empower their minds with the word of god and with encouragement so that's what we're getting ready to do so why don't we go ahead and get started we are making a moroccan chicken with what i like to call a cauli couscous that is cauliflower ground down into the size of couscous i'm going to show you how simple and easy it is and how delicious and as i said sometimes i flow solo we had an unfortunate little thing happen this morning. We had a co-host for you and God decided that I'm gonna ride this out alone. So I'm not worried about it. I know you're not because when the Lord steps in, only great things can happen. So let's see. Now with the Moroccan chicken, you're gonna take a couple pounds of chicken tender. And I do that because it's easy. Everything I wanna do is easy breezy pumpkin peasy. You'll hear me say that a lot. We can buy the chicken breast, we can slice it up, it, you know, it, it just takes a little bit longer or we can leave our chicken breast whole. That will take a lot longer to cook. So when we do it this way, or again, we're just saving time. Everything that we're going to do in the beginning is putting the chicken into a Ziploc bag and putting our spices in there as well. So we take our tenders and oh, we've preheated our oven to 400 when we walked in the door. Let's say we took off our shoes, you know, we got in the house, took off our shoes, put the oven to 400, ready to go. We've got our Ziploc bag. We are taking chicken tenders, putting them in the bag. Okay, now, of course, I wanna rinse my hands real quick because as you guys know, we don't wanna mess around with chicken. Chicken can be a no-no. So we're just gonna real quick, clean our hands, come on over and dry off. And you can see we've not spent any time hardly at all, right? That's because we haven't done anything. No, I'm kidding. Okay, so here's our bag, Moroccan chicken. You're going for a very savory and sweet combination on this. We're looking at some turmeric, some cumin. We've got some cinnamon, some coriander, real easy. And of course, you'll have your spice bottles and just kind of whip it in there. You can add oh, chili powder. You guys can add more things, you know, if you want to add more than what is on my recipe, that is fine. It all depends on your taste level, how hot you like things, how spicy you like things. But when you go to joannejohnsoninc.com slash recipes, that's where you'll get the recipes from every show. This one will be on there. And if it says, you know, two tablespoons, you want to add four because you really like that thing piping hot, you go ahead and do that. It's all about personal preference. It's all about what you like. Okay, we're looking at minced garlic now. So remember, we've had cumin, we've had coriander, some cayenne, a little chili powder, okay, just like so. And again, with my Himalayan sea salt, you guys have heard me say this before, I am all about the Himalayan sea salt because it does not raise the blood pressure the way that iodized salt is, okay? And we're gonna put a little sugar. So you can see we've got some smokiness in here and we've got a little bit of sweetness. And I am putting a little bit of olive oil in this bag. Now, all you do, make sure that it's sealed because this could be bad news bears, okay? Toss it around like this. If you wish to let this sit and go change your clothes, you know, go take a bath, whatever you need to do to unwind um, after work, you can do that or you can go ahead and just let it sit for a couple minutes 
again, depending on how, how strong you want that marinade. If you decide to, to not do this in the 20 minutes or less, or you wanna be technical about it, that's fine. You can do this several hours ahead of time. You say you come home for lunch or something and you wanna toss this in your bag and then go back to work and then it's all ready to go when you get home. You can do it however you choose. Okay, so you can see we have tossed it all around and we're doing a very even coat or as, as even as we can get it, okay? So here we are. We're just kinda of playing with it a little bit, making sure it's as evenly coated as we can get it and setting that like that. Now, with our cauliflower, this is our couscous, and you're gonna find in the next couple of sessions, or next couple of episodes that we do, rather, that I'm using a lot of cauliflower. I love cauliflower straight. I love it turned into other dishes. Um, next week, you're gonna see me do uh, cauliflower nachos, which is a little different twist. Super fun, super fast, super easy, as I always say. But today, we're doing a cauliflower couscous. So we're just taking our florets off like so. And you wanna figure one medium head of the cauliflower. And depending on how many folks in your family like cauliflower, it's gonna feed three to four. Um, me, this feeds me by myself because I am that way, okay? I happen to love cauliflower, but don't tell anybody. But if you have to completely indulge in something, a vegetable like this is a great choice. Now. All you do, you've seen, we've taken the florets off. We're gonna bring them over to our food processor. Okay, super wonderful. Put our lid on, and it is gonna get loud for just a second. You're gonna pulse this just a couple times, maybe three or four. Okay. You can see it's starting to ground already. Two. Three. Hello, lovely. It is done. Look at this. Can you see that? Okay, it's fabulous. Pull your blade out, toss it on a pan, a sheet pan with parchment paper. Again, it, it will keep it from sticking to the bottom of the pan, but not only that, it's about easy cleanup. That's, that's what I'm about. Again, this entire thing is about easy cleanup. I dropped my rag down here on the shelf, I'm sorry. Okay, got a little mini shelf down here. Okay, let me just hang that up again. So that now, look at how cute that is. Looks like couscous, if you've ever had couscous, but without all of the added calories, okay? So now you've got that, perfect. We're gonna just thin that out so that it's, it covers as much of the pan as we can get it to because again, we're wanting it to cook as fast as humanly possible, okay? Look at this. It already smells really good and I know that I'm not the only one right now going, well, this is interesting and this is super fun. It really, really is and I saw, hello, see, these are the things that happen in the kitchen. You throw things around, not everything is perfect, right? I like that. All right, let's take a little bit of olive oil. We have some left over here, so I'm gonna put it on top just like this, and you don't want to use a, a huge amount, okay? And again, using olive oil, because that is one of the best fats that you can have. It's just so good for you. And a little salt, little, I am using actually a little bit of iodized salt. I know, I said that I wouldn't, but a little bit. It's okay, you don't have to use Himalayan sea salt or regular sea salt all the time. It is okay to use an iodized salt, in fact, if you, you know, say you have thyroid issues, you do have to watch your salt because a lot of times you will have lower sodium. So you need to talk to your physician about that and uh, make sure you don't go too low on that. Now, a little bit of pepper here. Can you even stand how easy that is? All we do now is stick that into the oven. I will turn around for one moment and I'm going to stick that in the top of that oven and not worry about it. The next thing that I will do is take this chicken and I will place it into any kind of a pan that I wish. I am lying to you, you know why? I forgot. I'm gonna go ahead and pan sear this first for a moment by putting a little olive oil in the pan. Let's get that hot real quick. 
Okay. All right. Just like that. All right, while that heats up just for a second, let's move over to our sauce because we do have a sauce that is going to go over the chicken. So now we have marinated it. We have um, just done that lovely, that lovely little uh, marinade. Okay, with our sauce, again, some cumin. It's kind of a little bit more of what we did, okay? Himalayan sea salt, but we're adding honey to this, maybe if it comes out. And then we can look very impressive. If not, then I'm sorry. So here we have that. Okay, it did come out. Oh, thank you, Jesus, it came out. Look it, I like it when the plan comes together. Okay, little lemon juice. Little bit of olive oil, not much. Just a little bit, okay. Some more turmeric. And I did put some ginger. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of cilantro. Cilantro is fun. I love the way that it smells. I love the way that it looks. I did, you know that a couple episodes ago where I did the blackened salmon over the lime cilantro rice? I was very fortunate to be um, asked to be the guest chef to an international organization that I'm sure you guys know of called Les Marmitons, okay? And I went out there and there was 30 chefs and it was really, really fun. And I got the opportunity to cook that blackened salmon dish for them. And we did a corn chowder and mushroom caps. It was a five course meal. And you guys are gonna to have to remind me that maybe I need to do that clam, or clam, I could do clam chowder too. But I did a really beautiful corn chowder that I think I may wanna do for you also. It was gluten free, the entire menu was gluten free except for dessert, which was a tres leches cake, which was talk about at some point because I think people wanted to like sell everything that they owned to have a piece of this tres leches cake. So we'll talk about that. Let's check on our pan. It is nice and hot and we are going to simply remove our chicken tenders from the bag and they smell fantastic. I have to tell you, I, you know, I need to eat like this all of the time. The truth of the matter is, and I have to be honest with you, um, I don't eat perfect all the time. And a lot of times people think, oh, she's a chef. And it was said to me last night, I was at a meeting last night, and the person said, oh, because your family must eat so well all the time. And I said, no, the sad part is, when I go through the drive-through, they call me out by name. That is not good. That's when you know you need to make a little bit of change in your life. But what happens is, I'm busy. I'm busy, busy, just like you guys are. And it gets, it gets hard. So you have to prep ahead of time or you have to cook meals like this that take the 20 minutes or less. Now what we do, I, I really need to invent a smell-o-vision television, okay? I really, really do, so that you guys can get a whiff of this. You can smell the sweetness you can smell the savory on it it's just i don't know it's a it's a very i don't even know how to describe the flavor it's a very calm flavor if that makes sense it just sort of warms you the smell of it does now what we're doing with the chicken is taking the cold off of it obviously and just letting it warm through and then remember I always tell you that we want to place it in our dish and finish it off in the oven for 10 minutes. So we're really only, what have we spent so far on this entire dish? Maybe six minutes. You know, our, our colicous is in the oven already. I can't even believe that happened that fast. I should though, but I can't believe it happened that fast. Now our chicken is already cooking. Our dressing that's gonna go over the chicken is our, has already been done. We're almost done. Let's go back and check our chicken. Look at how pretty already. You see the dark, rich flavor on that. Look at that. It's such a, it's just a beautiful color. I love that. And I really like cooking from different cultures. I do a lot of Chinese. I do Moroccan. I do South African. I do kosher food, paleo. You know, with my catering company, All Jay's Catering, I have to cook for a variety of clients. Or should I rephrase that? I get the opportunity to cook for a variety of clients. And I have a lot of people who will call things in. They want 
some Mediterranean food or they want South African food. And as a caterer, when, you know, when you're hiring a caterer, just a little piece of advice, you need to make sure that they know how to cook from any culture. Um, it's not just being a caterer is not just throwing something out of a can and that makes you a caterer. You have to know a lot about a lot, how to cook a lot of dishes. And in my company, I do over 350 different kinds of appetizers, over 100 different kinds of salad, and 75 different kinds of chicken. So when you call somebody like me, you know, well, you can say, just bring me whatever as long as it's good. We do have clients that don't even know sometimes what they're going to get until we show up. And that is pretty exciting. That's when the challenge begins for me. I like that. Okay, we're gonna take our chicken and look how pretty it is already. I love this. Okay. And try to get your kids involved too. That would be a good recommendation. My kids love to be in the kitchen with me and I've taught them at a very young age how to, how to cook. Um, it's great quality time together. And I, I love it. I love it. And my 11-year-old in particular loves cooking. And she gets in the kitchen with me and does it all the time. And she's always wanting to create recipes. It's great family bonding time. What you know, and we already talked about how busy everybody is and they're running in different directions. And you don't get a lot of that quality time anymore. It's really hard. So you have to make the time. And they, you know, you, you just get together in the kitchen and bond and love on each other. And you're teaching your kids a craft. You're teaching them an art because, you know, the way to a man's heart is where through his stomach is what they tell us. So my husband loves me a lot, <laughs> at least I hope. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and place it in here and you'll see our collie coos is cooking away. It is smelling so, so good. I want to give the dressing one more stir. Okay, and it's, it's so good. It's just a light, light vinaigrette. We've got lots of cilantro in there, and we want to top our dish with cilantro sprigs as well, just to make it pretty. Knowing that you eat with your eyes first, everything that you do, you want to make it as pretty as you can, bringing in as many colors as you can by way of peppers and you know vegetables, fruits, all of that kind of stuff, because you do eat with your eyes first. For us too, in our family, you know, being rushed all the time. One thing that you'll do is eat very fast or you eat standing up and you, you're just so rushed about it. I think we need to slow down as a, as a society and, and just kind of remember to relax. And if we're, if we're eating on the run, people complain about indigestion, they get heartburn, um, they can't lose weight. There's so many reasons why, me included, why we have difficulty losing weight you know, today. That's another one of those reasons. But eating, and eating should really be more than eating. It should be dining. It should be an experience. So you sit down to this beautiful plate. You've got your family or your friends around you. You take your time. You look at it. First of all, you want to admire your work because you say, you know what? I am fabulous because look what I did, okay? And you're going to find out when we're done. You want to get credit for that. You want all the, ha the hands to be raised, everybody, you know, confetti, you know, balloons coming down. No, okay. But you, you do, you wanna, you wanna just enjoy that. You wanna say, man, this is a beautiful dish and you want to eat slower. I remember growing up, I would hear, chew every single bite 20 times and I would watch my stepmother do this. Meanwhile, I was done, three hours later, she's still eating her food and I was very agitated with her. But the truth of it is, she was digesting it properly. She found she ate less because she was not in such a hurry. I don't know if you guys are like me, but I'll grab something on the run and I eat it well, first of all, I forgot that I ate it. Then I end up eating more, and I'm because I'm still hungry. I've not enjoyed the experience, and it's more of just something that I do out of habit or when I get stressed out. And a lot of this show is about, you know, we talk about the title, empowering your body and empowering your mind. Well, it's not a show about getting as skinny as you can, okay? This is a show about truly empowering your body to live this life, to do things that we need our bodies to do. You know, I used to be super, super skinny and people used to tell me, oh my gosh, you look cohexic, you know, you need to eat something. I was a size zero and it didn't matter what I ate. Um, but then I had a lot of kids who I love more than anything else in the world and hormones kick in. 
we get different conditions. We get medical conditions, things happen. Maybe we are running on empty for 20 hours a day and we give ourselves adrenal fatigue, okay? The big lights flashing behind me about this. And then it becomes very difficult to lose weight. And also, if you are in, you know, say 36 and up, maybe 35 and up, and you're perimenopausal, which a lot of the women just went, oh, yes, girl, that's exactly. You have trouble losing weight um, and, and trouble maintaining weight. A lot of folks say, I, I walk by a bakery and I smell something and I gain five pounds. Why? Because your hormones are doing this. And I used to ride the, the bike, you know, 10 miles a day, I work it out two hours a day. I couldn't lose weight. I just didn't understand it until I had blood work done that said, oh, by the way, you're in stage three adrenal exhaustion and your hormones are off the stinking Richter. So now I'm learning to love who I am, just absolutely love who I am. And I want that for you because God loves you, whether you're a size zero or whether you're a size 300. I mean, you know, if there's such a thing, it doesn't matter. God loves you the way that you are. But what, you know, I, while this is cooking, there is something that I did want to talk to you about. Every week, I try to bring you guys a topic that the Lord lays on my heart, and I really do feel passionate about it. And it's called, okay, it's called, um, this is your year. Apparently, I just stumbled. This is what happens. I get, I get kind of sidetracked because there are so many things that I want to tell you and I want to share with you. But many of you know, and, the re and I, I apologize for stumbling, but... I think back to the year 2014 and what a difficult year that was. And I may have shared a little bit of that with you guys in the past, but the truth of it is, I, you know, we all go through a lot of junk and I'm gonna try my best not to cry, but we go through a lot of stuff and this life that we live is messy and it's ugly. And sometimes we don't feel supported and we have things that happen in our lives that no matter how hard we try, Nothing seems to be turning to gold for us. Well, for me and my family, 2014 was that year. And I tell you, the entire year. And just as an example, you know, the, I have another show that was getting ready to start and my producer died very suddenly. I had, um, my grandmother died. And my grandmother was 96 and all the people in my life lived to be a very old age on both sides of my family. So when grandma died at 96, I mean, we kind of expected that. But then eight weeks later, my very young mother died very suddenly. And we, none of us were expecting that. She had no health problems um, and the Lord just decided to take her. And then a couple weeks after that, my stepdad was diagnosed with cancer. At the same time, I closed one of my businesses. Okay, the reason that I share this with you is because I know that a lot of you guys can relate that sometimes it just comes and comes and comes. But when the ball dropped on New Year's Day, I absolutely went hysterical crying because I said, Lord, you allowed me to live through it, thank you. And so at that same moment, I realized that 2015 was going to be nothing like 2014. And the Lord has spoken to me very clearly that it isn't just for me, it is for you. That 2015 is your year. It is gonna be off the chain, fantastic. You will not believe what is about to happen. You know, you have been sowing seed for a very long time. You have been waiting patiently. You have done all the things that God has asked you to do you have done all of that. And this is the time that you are going to see in Jesus name. You're going to see the harvest. I know it. I feel it down to the depths, down to my depths, down to my toes. I know this. And you've heard a lot of other pastors and people talking about 2015 is the year of increase. It is, you know, we talked a couple weeks ago about how the Lord wants us to live an abundant life. He wants it now love bugs. He wants it now. You need to believe it. You need to claim it. You need to go after it. You need to say, you know what? I don't care what happened in 2014. Okay. It was bad. It was ugly. It was a hairy stinking mess. And I don't care because I emptied my plate. It is no longer on my plate. What is on my plate is not only beautiful food, but it is a bounty. It is a harvest. It is nothing but good things in Jesus name. That is what is going to happen. And also what's going to happen before I finish telling you that thought, I'm going to get the food out of the oven and I'm going to plate it. So give me one moment to grab a plate. I want you to see how gorgeous this is. 
let me just get this. We have not been in the oven very long at all. Well, I haven't, the, the food hasn't, but let's just grab it. Okay, we have got our beautiful Kulikus right there. Sometimes I call it Kulikus, sometimes I call it Kulikus, depends on my mood. All right, we've got our chicken. And again, because we pan seared it, we only had to go for like eight to 10 minutes in the oven. All right, we are going to take this plate over here. Oh, you need to smell this, look. I can barely stand me because I'm so excited about this and I'm gonna be really excited for you. Again, you guys need to go to joannjohnsoninc.com to get today's recipe. You can also find the blog and I really encourage you to do that because what happens is I get really excited when we come. I, you know, I come on the show and I get really excited to talk to you and then I don't say everything that I have written down. So for a complete transcript of what I'm talking about, go to joannjohnsoninc.com and get that. And let's see, we're gonna plate this beautiful, beautiful chicken. Oh my goodness, look at you. See, I'm assuming that y'all have already made this. Look, oh, can you stand how fabulous you're about to be? If we can get it on the plate properly. There we go, look. Okay, we're gonna take a little bit of our dressing or our sauce and pour that over the top. What do you think? What do you think? I think that your family's gonna love that. And I think that that is gonna empower your body. Full of, well, hello, someone's already calling because they want the recipe faster than you. <laughs> okay, you gotta love that, right? I love that kind of stuff. Okay, yeah, I mean, phones are actually already ringing. We have people who wanna call us for prayer and I would encourage you to do that. They wanna call 985-8020. They wanna call. They want to have us pray for them. They want to get a recipe. They just want to be encouraged and supported. Do that. Like us on Facebook and empower your body, empower your mind. Again, get the transcript at joannjohnsoninc.com slash blog or slash recipe. We love you. Oh, how we love you. I've had so much fun today, you guys. I just, I want to pray you out, okay? Lord God, we thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for these people, Father God. Thank you for what you're doing in our lives, Father. We are believing in an expectancy for great things this year. Just, we love you, Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen and amen. Yeah, you guys, again, get with us, call us, get us on Facebook. Um, you know, we want to do life with you. That's really what I say every single time, and that is not just a line. We love you. We believe in you, we are believing for you, and we wanna do life with you. I love you. Have a wonderful day.